Hey guys, it's Matt. Yes, you are looking at David Carradine, one of the worst actors of all time. This is not a video about David Carradine. Could you imagine if I made a video about David Carradine? This is a, um, a hodgepodge. A lot of people send me a lot of interesting things, um, emails. I'm going to start light with this and then go on to some other things people sent me about the nature of reality itself. Much more serious, but it's best to, to start light. So we all have seen this, you know, the Kill Bills are some of the worst movies ever made. And yeah, Kung, the original Kung Fu was interesting, but there was no acting there. Anyway, so uh, the first one from Rich, he says, uh, Matt, do you remember David Carradine, the former Hollywood guy starting Kung Fu? His last big film, film was Kill Bill. Um, you may recall the story of his humiliating death. Found naked in 2009 in a Thailand hotel with a rope around his neck and other parts. Uh, he made a crucial miscalculation while trying for that ridiculous <laughs> near-death masturbation orgasm that we occasionally hear about. We've all heard stories like that. It says, maybe it was an accident, as it was reported, probably not. Maybe he was murdered, possibly. I lean towards the possibility that he has been enjoying an idyllic retirement with Prince Bowie Epstein, and um, he had to go along with the humiliating story of his demise, and enjoying potentially enjoying the many perks of faking one's illuminous il il death. Okay, now what makes the hy latter hypothesis more compelling? Here's here's why I'm I'm showing you this. This is incredible. Is his song a great big cosmic joke? Like 20-some, 30-some years ago, David Carradine wrote this song called A Great Big Cosmic Joke. Now, it is one of the worst songs you'll ever hear. I'm going to try to play like five seconds of it. Could you imagine if I got some sort of a CR issue from what I'm about to do when people are, people are reviewing the last three Star Wars, showing an hour of the movie for each review? But it's possible. I must feel like I should hum over it. Let me go over here, play what I can. Somebody had, has the record, they put it on their record player and has a giant skull on the top. And this isn't uh, the David Carradine channel or anything like that. Here we go. It's just a great big cosmic joke, but don't you know. I'm going to break it up just, to, just so there's no CR issue. It's just a great big cosmic joke, don't you know. Oh my God. It always hurts when I laugh. <laughs> it always hurts her when I laugh. Ha ha ha! He laughs. He he has this forced laugh um, several times in this song. As Rich said, it is absolutely cringeworthy. <laughs> so let's go back here. And okay. Now, sometimes we'll move off the David Carradine story in a moment. It's good to start light. But sometimes. Prince was killed in an elevator, or Whitney Houston in the bathtub, and her, da his, her daughter in a bathtub, and Chester, whatever, whatever, Lincoln Park, he's, he's a Podesta. We hear all these things about these celebrities, they just, the 26 Club, or the 27 Club, or whatever it is, and, you know, we always go back and forth, well, were they ritualistically sacrificed, and they knew it was time to pay the man? Uh, they knew this day was coming, Chris Cornell, or are they just on, you know, they just on with David Bowie's uh, own private Idaho somewhere. And we go back and forth. And we'll, we'll, we need to do a whole video, a voting video, where you all vote, are these people really dead or are they alive? For most, I tend to favor the, the continent on this, this plane of existence that exists that's not on a map. I favor the David Bowie. There's no, Dave, Bowie is number one in this category to me, that there's just no way uh, he really died. The whole story of David Bowie's illness is absurd to me. Then with the Black Star and the Lazarus album, songs and album, I mean, give me a break. We'll talk about that some other time. The point is here, nobody listening to this channel is going to believe what the news story presents. I mean, whether we debate that he went off somewhere, or he faked his death, or he had to pay the man, it was ritualistic. Nobody here, if in just five seconds of investigation, is going to believe the news story. And as usual, I, let me just one more minute go over here. As usual, as you look into the Wikipedia, or just poking into it a little bit, 
it breaks down as so absurd. Of course, you've got the great big cosmic joke. You've got the stupid song 20-some years ago, and then you've got the Wikipedia on his death. June 3rd, 2009, at age 72, Carradine was found dead in his room at the Swiss blah, blah, blah hotel um, near blah, blah, blah in Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok, Thailand. He was in Bangkok to shoot his latest film titled Stretch. He's <laughs> stretching himself in the closet. I mean, come on. Um, he, a police official said Carradine was found naked, hanging by a rope in the room's closet, causing immediate speculation it was a suicide. Blah, 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 blah. And then it says here, two of his former wives came, uh, stepped forth, Gail and Marina, and stated publicly that this is the more humiliation, that his sexual interests included the practice of self-bondage. And then they figured, oh, he was just trying to get off in the, in the closet. Like, you couldn't tell. Is this a, a suicide? Like, there's no difference when you come across a man in a closet with a rope, whether he's trying to get off or it's suicide. They look exactly the same to a, a police official. Yeah, okay. I mean, give me a break. Uh, look at this. Wrongful death suit. I mean, it just goes on and on and on as as whoever if the i don't know whatever av occupied whatever occupied the david carradine avatar spiritually whether it's the same as you or and me or not probably not but but as they move out towards the screen as one's life whether these people are real or not get closer and closer to the screen the circumstances regarding everything become more ridiculous so it can't just be as simple as his death getting off in a closet in Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand. We have a wrongful death suit. On the anniversary of his death, Carradine's widow, Annie, filed a lawsuit against the company that produced the film Carradine was working on at the time of his death. And you're thinking right now what I was thinking when I first read this. If the dude was, the, the, okay, this is the, whether, no matter what happened, what we speculate, that's something different. The official story is what everybody's going to go with, including the basis of the wrongful death, that he's trying to get off in the closet and killed himself. That's the official story. So you're reading this, I'm reading this, going, how could there be a, a wrongful death suit? What could the damn company that was making the movie have to do with him trying to get off in the closet with a rope? Let's just continue. The lawsuit claimed that the company failed to provide assistance <laughs> to the actor that had been agreed upon in his contract. What? The suit alleges the assailant left be left him behind. What? Wait, wait. The suit alleges the assistant left him behind for dinner on the night before the actor was found dead. The assistant and other film staffers apparently could not reach Carradine and decided to leave without him. Carradine called the assistant an hour later, but was told the group was across town and he would have to make his own arrangements that evening. The, okay, she won. <laughs> she won $400,000. <laughs> I don't, guys, who knows how this reality script, was there real people listening and weighing evidence on both sides and found that the company putting the movie together was wrongful? No, come on, no. So, so, I mean... Any, could you imagine any attorney, forget passing the bar, any attorney that got some law degree at, at the bottom of a Cracker Jack used to get some little booklets every so often. The law degree at the bottom of a Cracker Jack booklet. Some fifth grader could step forth and say, so let me get this straight. He was, they left him behind to eat dinner. A grown man in, at this, in, his, in, in his 70s at this point, he, wasn't, he was filming a movie. He wasn't dementia or anything like that. A grown man can't eat dinner by himself, and then this grown man took it upon himself to go back to the hotel room and perform some sort of perverted whack-off ceremony with a rope, killed himself, and the production company is responsible. Uh, yes, we find the production company responsible. They should be there with him at all times. When he's having trouble whacking off, they should be there to take care of it. We find in favor of the, um, not the defendant, we find in favor of the grieving widow and the claimant, $400,000 $400, for the win widow, Annie, <laughs> because of Carradine's wrongful whack-off death. Guys, I keep meaning to end the segment, then I'll see something, I'll do a little bit more research. This, we just have to continue a few more minutes. This is mind-boggling, mind-boggling. Um, this 
to me, is one of the worst actors of all time. He's horrible in Kill Bill. I mean, you could have put anybody in there, anybody. But he has that, I guess, that mystique from the original Kung Fu. That's the only thing he brought to the table. Look at this. And I'll stop with David Carradine. I mean, some of the emails are about the nature of reality itself, and I don't know what we'll be able to get to, but this is sometimes you just need a little bit of a of a laugh at the screen break. Honors and awards. Look look at this. Honors and awards. for This guy is horrible. Horrible. 1966 winner. Nominee, nominee, nominee. Blah, blah, blah. Kung Fu. Okay, fine. Maybe you got some Golden Globes. Look, look at these honors and awards. Winner. Golden Derby Award. Look at some of the names of the award. Saturn Award. Capri Hollywood International Film Fester Festival. The Golden Schmoes. The Golden Schmoes Award. Satellite Award. I mean, but a lot of these are for Kill Bill. Best Supporting Actor, Kill Bill. Um, where does it say? Some more. Oh, um, Best Supporting Actor here from the Online Films Critics Society Awards. Kill Bill Volume 2. Satellite Award. Best Supporting Actor, Drama. Kill Bill. Golden Derby. Kill Bill. He was there. Was, he was barely in Kill Bill. This is again. It's either it's some sort of reward for serving the system. In if anything were real, nobody. I, I need to stop. I mean, nobody believes these these award shows. Nobody listening to this believes any of this is real. It's just simply a thanks for serving the system. And if that's the case, you say, well, thanks for serving the system. We're going to push you up over here. We're going to give you a star on the Walk of Fame. We're going to we're going to make you famous over here, but per like the yin and yang duality, we have to we have to humiliate you over here, then you can go off to David Bowie, Bowie's own private Idaho. Get this, one bit of research into a joke, fractal reality leads to immediately leads to more ridiculous breadcrumbs. So I'm thinking, yeah, own private Idaho. It just comes to me from time to time. Like, what is that? Is that the B-52s? Or So I look into it, and I was go I'm was i still going to talk about what I was going to talk about. You know, if anybody's struggling, like, what is he, what are you saying here? Anybody new to this channel saying that these Hollywood actors or, you know, John, J Jim Morrison and all these people that potentially they, they tell us they're dead, they go off to an island, they go, yeah, yeah, I should, I'm going to talk about that for two two minutes for anybody that's new. Absolutely, it's possible. It's just as possible that, you know, everyone, oh, they're, no, they're satanically and ritualistically killed. That's possible, but it's probably both. There's probably tons of them on an island where Michael Jackson's performing tonight. Anyway, so I go to look into this, just do a Google image search, and Keanu Reeves apparently is in a movie. This is the B-52s, my own private Ida. What is this? Keanu Reeves, my, a movie with River Phoenix? I have no... I, anybody ever hear this? My own private Idaho. And does this satisfy? Is there something going on here? Remember the three qualifications for actors from a few videos back? Does this satisfy it? I don't think we even talked about Keanu Reeves. But like, what is this? <laughs> it's like a Mandela effect, but no, I'm not going there. Um, what? I never heard of it, but, you know, I missed it. I just, of course, I just missed it. I'm not calling it a Mandela effect. I just missed it, but what the heck is this? And the fact that, see, Keanu Reeves is used, you know, one thing leads to another. This is incredible to me. Keanu Reeves is a gigantic system player regarding um, themes that need to be laid down by the creeps, just like Robin Williams w was, or still is, on his own private Idaho, or just as Tom Hanks is, Keanu Reeves, almost bred for the part. He was horrible in Dangerous Liaisons. You would never put a horrible kid actor in Dangerous Liaisons. He literally, Dangerous Liaisons, you had Glenn Close, John Malkovich, absolutely believable as the Vicomte of of, of Fr of France, and then you put in you put in a wooing Keanu Reeves trying to woo a young um, Uma Thurman, and he's literally it's the Bill and Ted character. He cannot act outside of himself. He would never be put into. Let me just show you that if I can. Bootsy's about to step on my keyboard. No, Bootsy, no, no. Um, let me see. Keanu Reeves in Dangerous. Liaisons. One second. 
Uh, what was he, the Monsignor Dawsonet? <laughs> this is a joke. He was terrible. He's been terrible, but he's he is terrible at everything. But that he developed his own style, just like Schwarzenegger developed his own style. The point of all, of all of this rant is there's no way he would have ever been put into this role, um, unless two two possibilities. One, the connections are off the charts, like bloodline connections, that sort of thing. But the other uh, possibility, he just was meant to play this part per his, maybe his astrology chart. He was meant to play this part for the system right through cyberpunk video games, right through the Matrix 4. His, his chart or his astrology was so perfect, potentially, that he was meant to play this role for his entire life for the system itself. Um, you know, it's one or the other. I mean, it, it, you know, the, again, the guy down the cul-de-sac would argue that he just was a young actor that showed talent <laughs> and he needed to be placed somewhere as a young actor. No, no, I'm sorry. No, this role right here. Although the movie's very interesting. Dangerous liaisons, you know, um, the whole, there's a whole something going on there with the um, Malkovich uh, comes up with this line to break with, uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer. What does he say? It's beyond my control. He just keeps saying it over and over. There's some weird truth drop there we'll talk about some other time. It's beyond my control. Anyway, enough. This email from a few weeks back is from Brian. And just to spark your interest, let me read the final sentence and show this to you. Uh, because skateboarding is not for everybody, but it will be in a second when you read this. Anyway, I was just thinking about when I read that Tony Hawk is selling skateboards covered in his blood right now what yeah he's selling skateboards with his own blood this is from cnn style this is when you put your own blood into the product it's it's in the style section skateboards containing american pro skater tony hawk's blood sell out overnight and oh, why wouldn't they <laughs> what has it got here some sort of executioner where there's eyes where the nipples should be <laughs> It says liquid death, a vial of blood, or it's, or it's, I guess the blood is painted into the red on the bottom of the skateboard. So the, the reason this all started is I go back and forth with a lot of people about how the screen and the system is out to destroy everything that was once good. So everybody has their own little thing. In this case, I don't follow the skateboarding uh, scene, but you know, he's saying even this is being destroyed. So let's read what he wrote here from Brian. Skateboarding is often overlooked. It's an overlooked industry that was ruined by the screen. Growing up, we used to skate Love Park. Skaters represented freedom. Pros used to make amazing videos with music that synced to the tricks. Most of them were paid nothing, blah, blah, blah. Then Tony Hawk comes in. Yeah, I'm, I, I've been wanting to talk about Tony Hawk for a long time, and I'm not going to get into a big thing here. Maybe we'll do another video. This is absolutely a system plant, a player of that doesn't. Of course, he was a great skateboarder, but he be, he became the, the, the system beloved character, like a Keanu Reeves. And he's just in too many damn things. Let me let me just finish this, and I'll talk about that in a second. Then Tony Hawk comes in and crashes in, and it all started turning to shit. Yeah, that's what it does. Now you have this soulless. Uh, Nijad Houston kid who makes millions of dollars and drives Lamborghinis. In addition, you have these kids making just thousands of dollars competing in these corporate competitions sponsored by Nike. It started with the X Games. Corporate sponsors come in. Hey, some of these guys deserve to get paid, no doubt about it. But it's ultimately, and they do this with everything, it ultimately destroys what was once good. So then he links here to the skateboard that contains Tony Hawk's blood. Um, and guys, you know, I, I first started noticing it when Tony Hawk has this little cameo, and I'll, I'll move off this in two minutes, guys. Tony Hawk has this little cameo in Vin Diesel's Triple X. This is like 20 years ago. He's the guy that they he, he pulls up in the car. It's a stupid little cameo, the way they put Stan Lee and those little dumb cameos for Marvel movies. And he's driving the car right after he jumps off the bridge and the parachute. I'm like, why am I seeing this guy everywhere? 
So, okay, and then I just wrote, okay, he's a famous skateboarder. But then he just kept hearing over and over and over. And even to this day, he's in, he's in Subway commercials. To this day, I mean, honestly, if you are, if you're major into skateboarding and you're 15, you've heard of Tony Hawk. But these skateboarders, nobody under 25 gives a shit about Tony Hawk. I I started thinking this guy must have connections or he's doing something for the system where he continues to be rewarded. But, you know, that comes with a price. We saw that from David Carradine. Maybe they'll have Tony Hawk. Uh, hanging from a rope trying to jack off in a in another Asian hotel. But who it's all it just becomes unnatural when you say, okay, here's Tony Hawk again. And he has no personality. I mean zero. And you know, just because you're incredible skateboarder in the late nineties or something like that, and you took some tricks to a new level, is that where you're just gonna keep showing up decade after decade? There's, you know, basically you just get the sense that this person has completely taken out a condominium under the dragon's wing, and um, and then it then it's confirmed by stories about his blood being put into skateboards. And I mean, we can see this stuff so easily. I'm not saying I'm not pointing. I'm just pointing this out because nobody's going to be aware of this story. If you came across this story, the, the old guard here would be you'd you'd know, you know we'd see it exactly the same way instantaneously. That is. Uh, is it our, our blessing or our curse? Who knows? I would say a blessing, but, you know, sometimes it feels like a curse, doesn't it? Okay, this came from Scott a while back, and finally getting to it. Thank you, Scott. National Comics, December of 1940. Let me just scroll down to the zoom in. National Comics, Uncle Sam is some sort of superhero. And it says, oh, for anybody driving or just listening, I'll describe it. Um, it shows two high-rise buildings, two skyscrapers, two towers, and it says boom, with both of them going down um, in this comic from 1940. Now, I don't, guys, this is a whole video in and of itself. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. I might come back and revisit it, but there's four possibilities here, and at least we've added into how the reality operates. We've added possibilities. In the old days, and one of the possibilities is this is fake. If anybody's screaming, it's fake. Okay, I, I, you know, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck here. I'm aware that that is possible. We'll try to touch on that. That is one of the four, of course. You always have to keep that on the table for whatever their, their weird, creepy goals may be in faking something like this. But, you know, at, le at least we're, we're opening and expanding our minds on this. In the old days, all we had was the same script. All we had in 2010, 2011, 12 was predictive programming, predictive programming, predictive, that's all we had. That's all we could parrot. <laughs> predictive programming. Polly want to predictive programming. Yeah, that's all we could say. Okay, that's a start. But um, big part of the truth community, that's still, they're still in the exact same spot. At least we were opening our minds to different things. One is predictive programming that the creeps have the reality script planned out long, long in advance. Some say 50 years, some say hundreds of years, some say thousands of years. Some say the entire thing is a script. You have no free will, and, there, and you know everything is, is, is written in the stars and whatever, whatever. So they have to show you, they gain power by showing you predictive program. Okay, that's, what we, that's, that's the only place we could go, and that is possible. Of course, it's, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not taking that off the table. Now, the other possibility we started to talk about maybe a few years ago is a more like a channeling type thing that, you know, time does not exist. One moment is just laid on top of the other. And the only thing we have where, where we put the needle on the record, that's what we experience as life. The needle being the translation for, of, of reality through the senses in the senses into consciousness. But the, the, the music on the record is all laid out in advance. It's all there. It just seems like a, a an album is playing because the needle is going through the record. It's all there, or in the case of time, it might be all stacked on top of itself. So why isn't it possible somebody, you know, the future is just right there in front of you. You just, because of the census and the way this reality system set up, you can't, you can't touch it, or the past is right there too. So artists potentially channel, you know, basically they channel what is coming, or they create art 
and they don't even know why they're creating it. That is possible. And if anybody's screaming out, Matt, this is called National Comics, and it's Uncle Sam, you do understand that's part of the same cabal. Yeah, I didn't fall off that turnip truck either. I, that, of course, that is that ma that makes this more possible that it's predictive programming, of course. But I'm just saying, in general, where we are in this. So you have artists, art channels the future when there is a major event because there is no such thing as future, but we'll talk about that some other time. I say that definitively. These are my beliefs. Do I know 100%? No. Um, the, 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 so that's the artist channeling it. The third possibility is we get even more strange as we go down the sliding scale here. We talk about retro causality changes to the past from big events now or big events in the future. So regarding now, um, the retro causality aspect, this thing is so massive, what's going on now with C, that you will see books written about it and comic books and, um, you know, memes and tropes. And, and, and the, the idea of retro causality is they exist now and they have always existed, but they, but they were basically the past was changed because of the magnitude of the current or the future event. It, it's very difficult concept, but it is not difficult at all for the Mandela affected. The Mandela affected, they see a change, but there is no change. It's always been that way. And uh, the Mandela affected can easily um, come to grips with this being a, a retro causality because that's exactly the way the Mandela effect works. So another possibility, it is, it's, it's fake coming from national comics. But then you get into, okay, why... You know, um, well, if it's fake, there one the big problem if it's fake is there are certain comic book experts that these people are experts. They know, they ha they know everything about. You know, there's like there's like you know they're mostly men. So I'm going to say guys. I'm sorry, it's mostly men that are huge. You know, there's like 200 guys in the United States that basically like our our Rain Man geniuses about comics. We would probably be able to say they would know in an instant whether this was real or not. That's what I'm saying. So it's almost, from that perspective, it's pretty hard to fake and insert this like it was a real comic in the 40s, but it wasn't. And there's probably, you know, a lot of people that would know that instantly, like comic book Rain Men. But so let's just say they could pass it off. What would they get out of it? So then they bring it to our attention. You know, it it was brought to Scott's attention, and they know then that's going to come to my attention or another truth channel. Then we talk about this. Okay, well, what are they going to get out of that, really? You know, what are they going to get out of that? And and also, again, you have the problem of of comic book experts saying this is, but, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, it it has to be on the table. I, I'm just doing this on the fly. What they would get out of faking this, I don't, I don't really know. Maybe I'll dive into it some other time. But um, either way, you know, we, whether this is legitimate or not, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples in art now that, predicted the 2001 event. And um, we're never going to know exactly how that happened, which, which are actually planted by the creeps, which are called the, the strict definition of predictive programming. Uh, but, but many of the old guard here, I guarantee, is more like me. That's, yes, yeah, some are predictive programming, but some are these other strange phenomenons, even retro causalities, like potentially the Peter Stuyvesant commercial. The, the, so what do you, we're not going to know, but what you take out of it is, again, what you take out of it is the world isn't real. You take out of it, the, the, the world is, you know, a hundred times more fluid than, than we ever thought it was, how there is nothing really solid here. It is just, um, you know, a quantum flux mess with with the creeps pulling their reality buttons and levers. Nothing's Nothing's very real. That's just, whenever I see this stuff, it's just my continued takeaway. And then the big takeaway on top of that is, well, then why would you, if, if you come to the conclusion it's not very real or not real at all, then then it even helps, it, it helps you even further not put any stock in this reality, or at, at least uh, it makes it easy to detach from it and dump, like we talked about a, a video back, just dump everything out here so you can you can move out of here after life is over, having just dumped everything you needed to dump here behind. Why would it, why, you know, something that shows itself as not real uh, or a joke like this um, doesn't deserve my worry or stress or fear or anything like that. So let's move on to the next one.
back to the absolute light side, but not maybe not. I mean, that's the thing. This came in from our friend Mache. I apologize. I don't think I've ever pronounced an Eastern European male name correctly, but I'm, I'm sorry, man. You got to help me out with that if I if I butchered it. Um, Geronimo, the alpaca, set to die after no ten refuses stay of execution. After no ten refuses, who wrote that? What bot wrote that headline? Okay, Geronimo's owner says the tests for bovine TB are false positives while more than 80,000 people have signed a petition calling for him not to be put down. Now, here's the owner, and if anybody's driving, it shows a picture of the nice, really cute alpaca, like a llama type thing. And Helen McDonald, the owner, Helen McDonald said she would get between anybody who tried to kill Geronimo, the alpaca. Helen McDonald, old McDonald, had a farm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can't. Uh, reality, reality. If you're listening, you have derailed, my friend. That's from Tommy Boy. Guys, look at this before I read the article. Over the here, do this to get rid of rodents, and these flash up every so often. I don't know if this one's going to stay here because I'm talking about it, but I've seen a lot of different advertisements here. Do this to get rid of rodents. Never seen anything like this. Two days ago, I, I almost never get. A mouse in the house here. The cats were going crazy. They and Bootsy was the one that actually got the mouse and messed it up pretty bad before I could put it in a bucket and throw it outside. So I get this. Is it, uh, two days ago, the cats are chasing a mouse <laughs> and do this to get rid of rodents. Never in my life have I gotten a an ad <laughs> for. And I didn't have any computer. Maybe my smart. Maybe, maybe the smart TV heard you know, what was going on, but I didn't have a computer or any, I certainly don't have a smartphone that listens to everything. Anyway, guys, let's get back to the article. Anybody new to this channel found that sidebar very strange, but you guys know what I'm talking about, how the ads just kind of show up based on what's happening to you, not in, not in terms of what you say in front of your computer, but in terms of what happens to you with reality itself. An alpaca condemned to death after testing positive for bovine tuberculosis looks set to die despite his owner's pleading with Boris Johnson for a stay of execution. They're pleading. They have an audience at 10 Downing Street, and they're pleading with Boris Johnson. Is he giving, I wonder if he's giving any attention, like highly considering whether, whether to stay the execution. Geronimo, a six-year-old alpaca, tested positive for the disease twice, and a high court judge, it got to the high court, has ruled that the animal must be put down. Okay, also, if it's it's bovine TB, is I didn't is an alpaca bovine? That's isn't that just like a bull or a cow? Whatever. I guess I guess it's dangerous to be carried inside of a of a llama or alpaca because it could spread to the the local cow and bovine industry in the UK like a mad cow. Anyway, I mean, this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. Um, in terms of what is Mrs. McDonald in on it? I mean, in terms of how the reality presents this, we we'll can ponder that stuff some other time. Yeah, it seems completely like BS. But why? The, the point is, why are BS stories like this run? You know, no matter what element are, is real, maybe sometimes all the players are believing in exactly what's happening, and it is basically, quote, real, but it's carrying forth what, quote, the reality once carried forth. That, you know, we'll talk about that some other time. But let's just keep it light. More than 80,000 people have signed a petition. 80,000 people are going to be in, are involved in this, in, a, in, a, in an alpaca. Come on. You can't get 80,000 people to sign a petition for anything. See, this is, it's the comedy of the reality. You know, when the people, I guess California 10 years ago, allowed a 14-year-old girl to go without parent, parental consent and get, um, you know, the morning after pill or whatever whatever abortion pill she needed. A 14-year-old girl without, and people tried to get um, a pushback, Sacramento and the, the, the state legislature in California about that. They probably couldn't even get 80000 to not allow the state legislature of in Sacramento and California to move forward with... Uh, laws allowing 14-year-old girls to 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 take care of their own business with the morning after pill the next morning. They couldn't even get, but they get 80000 here for an alpaca. Bullcrap. I mean, completely ridiculous. 
Uh, Boris Johnson's spokesman said the rules need to apply equally and all the high courts involved, 10 Downing Street's involved. Guys, the the main message here, like why does reality want to deliver a story like that? Um, one thing that comes forth to your subconscious as you read this, even though it's people reading it, oh, it's just about an alpaca, could never affect me. One thing that hits your subconscious and unconscious or the average person reading this you know, when you read these things, we, you need to be aware of what the subliminal message is trying to get to you. And most people listening to me, of course, are, you know, aware of this. But that, you know, life and death, it's not up to you. It's up to a government. And see, this plants the the notion that a government, because a, a an animal, an animal gets a disease, then a government, because to stop the spread of disease, a government can put that animal down. We've always been told human beings, we are animals, we've been told. So we, we and the subconscious might relate that, that, you know, deep down, and people re reading this article would be smiling and, or laughing, or not laughing if they feel for the alpaca, but they would see it as very light, but is the subconscious message that, that they're getting, the average person reading this, that, you know, if I get a new rare disease will government be able to put me down it, it's all it's it, the reality takes tiny little steps towards totalitarianism over a very very long period of time so with something like this to me it is the um the subliminal message that's delivered to the people reading we need quote we need disease control measures to be applied consistently and of course, it's, oh, it's just about the alpaca, but is that what the subconscious hears? That ultimately a government will be doing this to you if you have, if you unfortunately test a certain way for a certain thing. Um, although what could be, what could be more scary than the new, I always forget the name, so I always relate it back to Swing Out Sister, which is Breakout. It's called The Breakthrough. The new one is called The Breakthrough. Not Breakout, Breakthrough Strain, you know? But if there's the if there's the triple breakthrough strain, you know your subconscious reading this may be like they might you might be in the same situation as Geronimo the alpaca. I think that is the point of these types of articles, and of course anybody that just stumbled upon this video would think we're absolutely out of our minds. This email from Chris um, opens back up the conversation around our biggest frustration which to me is a frustration and also a fascination. I try to put a positive spin on it because the frustration piece will have me ripping what little hairs I have left out. Why, here we go again, but it's worth talking about in this light, why we can see things so clearly and nobody around us or nobody close to us can see any of it. And the biggest part of that frustration is they don't see like a little bit of it. They see none of it. And it's just the opposite. So they can be violently or... or vehemently opposed when we present it. it um, and this is where I, I talk about the download and things like that. And, you know, understanding them in a way, understanding why your cousin will never see any of what you see, it does tell you a bit about yourself. Um, or, or that's ultimately why we do this. It's it's all a pointless screen exercise if it doesn't tell us about ourselves. So let me read this email and then we'll talk about the different components of it. So Chris says, I have a lot of conversations with people in my life around the current issues, as we all do, and I've seen a possible pattern. When people reject valid information presented to them over and over again, they're addicts or anybody deep in the denial phase of a grieving cycle. Okay, grieving stages of grief, really no difference between stages of grief at a funeral and, and stages of wake up, very, very similar parallels. Denial first, then anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. The acceptance is all the way down the line at number five. First is denial, of course. So people reject valid information, they're addicts, or they're deep in the denial phase of the grieving cycle. That's the key here. They're experiencing the cognitive dissonance of what you and I are saying to be true, and at the same time, knowing that if they accept it as fact, it will lead to a lot of pain, mainly the depression phase of the cycle. They don't, they're holding on dearly to the first phase of the cycle, is what Chris is saying. It's the same as me telling you that I have some bad news for you, a painful truth about your life, that if you accept will cause some serious downtime in the form of depression. 
would you want to hear it right now? Or would you maybe, you know, want to get your affairs in order and hear it later? Maybe there is some defense mechanism that would make you really reject wanting to hear that information because there's no room in your life for that serious energy drain right now. Like how many people will voluntarily put themselves in a grieving cycle to overcome some coping strategy or addiction? Most will avoid that pain at all costs. Maybe scanning for grieving cycle experience can lead to a prediction of how someone will take a download and to what extent. Last paragraph. In this case, the grieving cycle is believing one lives in a high trust society wherein the authority figures generally tell the truth and don't amplify fear. They aren't rejecting what I'm or what somebody like Matt's saying per se, but they're rejecting the months of depression from finally accepting that they actually live in a, putting it um, very kindly, a low trust society and all the work they must do to accept the new reality. Okay, very, very um, uh, well put. Now, one interesting thing that Chris is saying is people have moved through the five steps from denial to acceptance, the steps of grief other times in their life, and it could almost be a predictor how readily or, or, or how willing they are to move quickly down to the acceptance phase could be a predictor as to how more um, open they will be to discussing some of the things that we talk about, where the worst case would be, it's not just the grieving cycle, he's um, relaying it to like a, an addict who says, I have no problem, oh, I don't have a problem with that, or uh, somebody who's on opioids or heroin, or I have, you know, I can control it, I have no problem, it's just constantly in the denial phase. Somebody that's there would never, if you want to say, let me tell you what really happened on the day of 7-11 in 2001, somebody th that's in the denial phase on some other part of their life would have no chance, of course, of ever understanding what, what, we're, what we would like to talk to them or we would like to present. So that, that's um, part one. The other thing it leads to is, you know, what is the mechanism at play that causes the people around us to not see one bit of this? So I'll be honest, where my mindset was when I started writing the book um, about four years ago, when I started writing it, it was all about um, cognitive dissonance. It was all about, um, you know, people reject the information as to the truth of this world for these types of reasons, more because they simply aren't prepared for it, or they don't, you know, we all, I thought, I initially thought they get a sense that it's true, but they just don't want to put themselves uh, in the situation where they're facing the hard truth at this moment, you know, in their lives. And as more time go went on, I, you know, I, I saw that there's just, you just can't explain how people can't see a bit of what we can see with like normal psychological explanations. Normal psychological explanations like cognitive dissonance just you know, that's part of it, no doubt. It's not one or the other, but that does not hold the bridge up on its own. There are other things at play here. Then we get into going down the, the sliding scale towards the completely strange, like the download, where some sort of download, some sort of means and mechanism we don't understand, uh, a technology, a magic, something we don't understand that, you know, does not allow people to literally bring the things that we see into their reality. And I don't even think I would have used the word download if I didn't experience it. You know, again, I'm sorry for the triggered, but Mandela affected people have experienced what's called the download in other people. And you've heard me talk about it a million times. I'll be, I'll be 30 seconds or less. But you start asking them Mandela effect questions they give the answers kind of like the way you'd want them to give the answers. And then they stop and change all their answers. Like literally, like they just got a download. I've witnessed this. Countless people I've talked to about the ME have witnessed this. So if this can happen, it's an overwrite of reality itself. Then potentially um, this some sort of similar means, technology, magic, or mechanism is being used to simply overwrite reality where it just makes 
the presentation in the commission report of what happened in 2001 is just completely believable. And, you know, it just, it just, that's just normal. And why would, why would Matt, why would you be poking holes in a, you know, in a, in a story or a presentation that's very valid and very believable where we see it, we pick up the commission report and it is an absolute joke. Somebody tell a joke. It's a joke from start to finish, every bit of it. It's more funny than the damn alpaca story. So, you know, there is, it's the other aspect of why, if it was just about psychology or latching on to denial, there is one part, and this could be at play it too. It's again, it's not one or the other. That, that, Matt, Matt, you go too far towards that they have reality buttons and levers and they're trying to tune everybody down to a certain frequency. And if they get people on the frequency, then they accept whatever ridiculous reality that's presented. I think those factors exist. Is, you know, is the 5G involved with it? I think all that exists. But just to continue this conversation more on the, um, you know, if it's it's not the creeps with all their buttons and levers, more under doing it just within the human psyche, there's one other explanation we haven't talked about much. And it has to do with the power of the subconscious or unconscious mind. I mean, we all see that, let's just do it one minute, the part of the brain that I'm talking in, the thinking part of the brain, the part that just spouts out this dumbass English, that is the dumbest, dumbest part of what we are, no doubt about it. You know, the subconscious, unconscious can regulate uh, blood sugars and heartbeats and knows when to sweat. And I mean, there's all these millions of processes going on and impossible calculations of blood chemistry, things that we just can't even fathom in the little idiot thinking part of the brain. So I have to assume that part of the mind is more powerful by a factor of 10 to the whatever power, more powerful by a factor of a million across the board. So would that side be more attached or in sync with what your spiritual self wants, your higher self wants, what your, depending on who, your beliefs, what God wants, what the part of you that's not here wants. And it could be as simple as, you know, uh, some people would come to me and say, you know, people have to go through this process. A Buddhist, a Buddhist would say they have to repeat this, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of, of lifetimes or more. And some maybe the subconscious unconscious knows that they're simply not ready. The person itself n needs far more experience in this lifetime or the next. And they're simply, oh, oh, you've got these generator beings who are old souls around here ready to graduate. And the subconscious or unconscious of the person, your cousin, knows what's going on, but is like, as a, as a whole being, you know, saying, we're not ready to hear this. We're not ready to graduate. You know, we're not ready. It's like we're at maybe like 12th, 12th grade. We, we just understand calculus and we're running down to the kindergarten class trying to say, look at this calculus. And, and they're, well, they're, well, they're not going to get it. That's a bad example. But even if they could get it, you know, parts of them saying, you know, we're not ready for that. It's a bad example. We're not ready to hear that. The, this spiritual journey is just started for certain people here. And it completely cuts the information off the subconscious or unconscious mind doesn't allow, like lost in translation, it doesn't allow any bit of it to seep into that person's reality. Now, is it that simple? No, I think I think it's a combination of factors, though, and I think, I, I, I'm not taking the down law off the table, and every month that goes by, there, my belief that there's some sort of mechanism here, or some sort of magic, or some sort of weird reality button or lever that, that wants people tuned to a certain frequency... And when it gets people tuned to that frequency, they'll believe anything. Now, not everybody's exactly on the frequency, so it has to try kind of hard. But, you know, it, it's a combination of factors. It's a combination of factors. Uh, but ultimately, you know, what? why your cousin can never see one bit of the common sense you present is not really, is not really uh, you know, a, a direct... Uh, line item in your personal journey, what you need to do here for yourself, way by way, W-Y, way by yourself, it doesn't matter. We don't ever have to truly understand why our cousins operate or, or, or spouses in many cases can't see a bit of what we can see. Um, you know, but the, one of the simpler answers is they're just starting their spiritual journey. Don't rush it. They got a long way to go. 
And some, a lot of religions would say multiple lifetimes or thousands of, of lifetimes. You could be an old soul just because you're ready to graduate. Don't force the graduation cap on your brother or your sister. They got, they still, they're just still, they're still using coloring books in first grade. Leave them alone. And that is a much better, more healthy way of going about it. Anyway, um, that's everything, guys. Um, I'll be back. I think, I think, um, let's see. Well, I'm not sure. Rob, De- Rob will definitely load a free voice video tomorrow or Sunday at the latest. It'll be Sunday at the latest. I might make a YouTube video tomorrow and a few other things I want to cover. But there'll definitely be a free voice video uh, this weekend. Sorry we missed last weekend. Thanks.